Hello guys, this is a very long video about retrosynthetic analysis and I'll be talking about retrosynthesis from the book chapter of Claydin and that is chapter number 30. So if you already have a textbook of Claydin chapter 30, you can open that book and follow my video lecture. So this is an exclusive lecture about chapter 30 Claydin book retrosynthesis. So let's start so we will start from basic definitions the target molecule it's also known as tm that is the molecule to be synthesized and next is retrosynthetic analysis or retrosynthesis that is the process of mentally breaking down a molecule into static materials the next term is retrosynthetic arrow and this is an open-ended arrow this one the next type is disconnection that is an imaginary bond cleavage corresponding to the rewards of a real reaction. Then is the synthone, that is idealized fragments resulting from a disconnection. Synthones need to be replaced by reagents in a suggested synthesis. Then the reagent is a real chemical compound used as the equivalent of a synthone. So if you don't know about these definitions, I'm sure you will be familiar with these definitions when we will proceed to the real examples of retrosynthesis so don't worry if you don't understand these definitions all right let's start to the retrosynthesis the guideline number one is disconnections must proceed or must correspond to known reliable reactions for example this is a compound if you are doing disconnection from this bond that will generate a positive charge on this benzene atom and a negative charge on oxygen the negative charge on oxygen is perfectly fine there is nothing wrong with it but the positive charge on benzene is something unusual right because then you have to have electron withdrawing groups a strong electron withdrawing group in order to put that leaving group on benzene then undergo a nucleophilic substitutions but under normal conditions such as this this is very bad choice of disconnection not a reliable equivalent reactions all right so you need to remember whenever you do retrosynthesis you should disconnect from such a position where you end up with a known reliable reactions okay let's have a look at another example so that is the guideline number two for compound consisting of two parts joined by a heteroatom disconnect next to the heteroatom so what is a heteroatom other than carbon and hydrogen all of the elements are heteroatom for example nitrogen oxygen sulfur these are called heteroatoms so in this case sulfur is a heteroatom so you are disconnecting from the heteroatom position so the sulfur is making bond with this carbon so you disconnect it that disconnection of this position will be called cs sulfide and the sulfur will get a negative charge and this carbon will get a positive charge so in this case uh, these are called synthones and we need to find reagents or synthetic equivalents for these synthones. So negative charge on carbon which can be equivalent to sulfur, thiol, SH and the positive charge on this carbon is equivalent to this chlorine. So when you react with this, this compound with this chlorine, you can use a base which will generate a negative charge by deprotonating the sulfur and then this negative charge will attack on this carbon and you will get the product. So this is a forward reaction and this is a retrosynthesis. Now if you replace this sulfur with oxygen, you can use the same strategy. If you replace sulfur with nitrogen, you can use the same strategy. So you need to understand the concept. You cannot remember the molecules, the synthesis of molecules. You cannot remember the retrosynthesis of all the molecules that are being available in the literature. That's not how you learn organic chemistry. You need to have a method. You need to come up with a conceptual idea. It doesn't matter if you have this benzene or if you have two benzenes. It really doesn't matter. The conceptual point in this slide is that you need to disconnect from the hydroatom. So in this case, you are disconnecting the bond between carbon and sulfur and that gives you the positive charge on carbon because carbon is a less electronegative element and sulfur is more electronegative element and hence this sulfur gets a negative charge and carbon gets a positive charge. Now try to find out the equivalence. How can you generate a positive charge on the carbon? Put the leaving group, that's chlorine. How can you generate a negative charge on sulfur? Put the hydrogen, that is the way of doing retrosynthesis. This is the simplest basic example you need always need to do this connection in this way 
you disconnect the bond and put negative charge on one side and positive charge on one side and then come up with the equivalence all right let's move on to the next slide this is an example where you have a secondary amine on one side and ester on the other side so the rule number one in retrosynthesis is always recognize the functional groups what kind of functional groups present in the compound you need to target those functional groups and disconnect accordingly so this is secondary amine you can disconnect the bond between carbon and nitrogen that is a heteroatom bond and one side will become alkyl halide and another side will become NH2 all right then you disconnect ester so we have a simple CO ester disconnection you disconnect this bond and then one side will become ethanol and other side will become carboxylic acid how you can do this but just remember how we can prepare esters okay esters can be prepared when carboxylic acid reacts with the ethanol now think about forward direction reaction we have NH2 and we have acid so you react this acid with acid with ethanol in the acidic media you get the ester and you have a NH2 group now this is a nucleophilic position you react this with alkyl halide in the presence of a base you will get the target molecule all right so this is the approach this is the method this is a strategy that you should follow when doing the retrosynthesis now whenever you see a ester bond anywhere in the questions given to you in the exam or entry test you must must follow the strategy of disconnecting the ester it doesn't matter how other groups are connected to it you should follow this pattern you should follow the concepts how you can disconnect the secondary amines how you can disconnect the ester functionality in this slide you have learned the disconnection of secondary amines and disconnection of ester let's move on okay sometimes you are given a complex molecule and there can be multiple starting disconnections or possible disconnection like a b c and d now you have to pick which one will be better so in this case multi-step senses avoid chemo selectivity problem uh, problems what by chemo selectivity so selectively reacting at the one functional group or one uh, um, point and avoiding and not interfering other functionalities so if, if you look at the disconnection a that corresponds to the positive charge on this carbon and phenol on this benzene ring if you see the disconnection b that is phenol on the bis this benzene and the positive charge on this carbon disconnection d which disconnects from this carbon nitrogen bond and corresponds to this and disconnection c which corresponds to this one now the rule here is you should disconnect such a bond which is most reactive first so there are four disconnections possible but how can I proceed with which disconnection is correct or which disconnection is most suitable according to the retrosynthetic strategies disconnect that bond first which is most reactive so this one disconnection will be most plausible one which gives you the um, this disconnection that is which gives you this one disconnection C is most suitable one now you can proceed either e or in the f direction so f direction is much more reliable as you can see in e you disconnect the co ether bond and you will get these centones but if you disconnect from the position f you will get this di alkyl halide and ether and alcohol on this side then you can disconnect this position between carbon and oxygen that will give that will give you the phenol diphenol 14 di substituted and this phenol uh, the positive charge on this benzyl position now if you look at the synthesis the forward direction retrosynthesis is a backward and synthesis is the forward so you start from this easily cheap starting material 14 diphenol and then you react with bmcl bmcl is uh, phenyl ring ch2cl okay that's called benzyl chloride so this is a simple sn2 type nucleophilic substitution you get the formation of ethers and in the next step also base deprotonates this phenolic hydrogen and gets a negative charge there this negative charge attacks on one of this carbon and gives you the ether again and this next step is benzyl amine the NH2 being nucleophilic and this carbon being alkyl halide undergoes SN2 reaction and it will give you the TM that is target molecule so the point of this slide the point of this um, showing the molecule was idea was that the consider alternative disconnections and choose routes that avoid chemo selectivity problems often this means disconnecting reactive groups first okay I hope you got this concept let's move on to the next slide 
all right next strategy in retrosynthesis is a functional group interconversion okay sometimes you cannot disconnect directly so you need to convert one functional group into another in order to reach towards the simple reliable reagents so disconnection a is possible disconnection b is possible disconnection b seems to be a bit difficult one because to directly generating the positive charge and uh, pyridine what you need to do is disconnect this amide functionality so one side will become acid chloride and another will become the amine so it's a simple reaction of amines and acid chlorides that will give you the amide functional group then you can disconnect then you do FGI convert this acid chloride into acid carboxylic acid as carboxylic acid and acid chloride are derivatives of each other so they can be interconverted they can be prepared from one one another and then you disconnect this B that is called a C and amine disconnection now you will get a positive charge on benzene that where that's where you can put the leaving group that means that that's where you can put the chlorine or bromine okay let's have a look at the synthesis so you start with this this NH2X as a nucleophile attacks on this carbon and chlorine leaves then you have a formation of CN bond and converting of acid chloride with thionyl chloride into acid chlorides and this acid chloride reacts with secondary amine to give you the target molecule so in this uh, strategy we learned how we can use the functional group interconversion strategy in retrosynthesis in order to construct the synthetic strategy okay let's have a look at another example this is a secondary amine amine synthesis using functional group interconversion so you can easily disconnect cn amine bond but this is not a reliable or this is not a good disconnection why because this can cause several problems such as over alkylation what i mean by over alkylation is this nitrogen contains two hydrogens and this nitrogen is a nucleophilic in nature if this attacks on this alkyl light you get double alkylated amine and again this nh attacks on this alkyl halide then you get a trialkylated amine and if this nitrogen again attacks on this alkyl light then you get a tetraalkylated amine that's called quater quaternary amine having amine having a positive charge so this is the problem with this strategy so avoid this strategy for amine synthesis okay this is not a good strategy why because you may end up with having more alkylated products let's see what are the good strategies for amines okay this one is a better strategy because you are doing FGI first this is a tertiary amine you are converting amine into amide first and then you are disconnecting the amide bond CN to give you these starting materials now this is a simple well-known conventional reaction secondary amine reacting with acid chloride it will give you amide and then you use any reducing agent such as lithium aluminum hydride to reduce amide into amines this is the forward direction of this retrosynthesis so amine is reacting with the acid chloride gives you the amide bond and then you disconnect this amide bond with h2 and catalyst to give you the amine so that's the good strategy for tertiary amines if you see it closely this is a tertiary amine so you can follow this approach now whenever you are given a big molecule or different functional uh, possessing different molecules so you try to look out for the functional groups that are present in that molecule so and remember these strategies you know first you pick which functional group it is then you try to use this approach if it is tertiary i mean now try to use this approach using fgi convert this tertiary amine to amide then disconnect the amide bond to reach the simple starting materials and then this is a forward direction reaction first reacting tertiary amine with acid chloride and then making amide and then reducing amide with h2 catalyst all right let's move on to the next slide this is again the same slide all right this one is secondary amine now this is a slightly different approach for secondary amines what you do in this is you convert secondary amine into imines all right how you can convert amines into imine just react amines with either aldehyde or ketone then amines will be formed that's called fgi reduction then you delete or then you disconnect this bond between carbon and nitrogen that is c and amine disconnection and this will this can be disconnected into simple starting materials amines and aldehydes now you react this amine and aldehyde in the presence of an acidic catalyst 
to give you imine then you react this imine in the using the reducing enzyme such as sodium borohydride or sodium cyanoborohydride rh2 catalyst to give you the tert secondary amine this is the approach that you can use for or that you can follow for this um, synthesis of secondary amines so amine is a shift based formation okay let's go on to the next slide okay now you have it's time to apply the concept now you have a amide functionality so you disconnect the amide bond cn then you are ended up at secondary amine and acid chloride now this is a secondary amine you convert this into a fgi reduction imine then you disconnect this bond and one side you will get a ketone and another side will you will get an h2 so let's look at the synthesis of this molecule so this ketone reacts with this nh2 that is imine formation that imine formation means carbon double bond nitrogen then you reduce this double bond between carbon and nitrogen into nh and then you react this nh with this acid chloride and it will give you the desired product so this was the applying the concept of imine formation into a real rate of synthesis okay let's move on to the next slide again you start looking the molecule by first picking up what kind of functional group it is it's a secondary amine straight away you do fgi reduction either go towards amide formation or go towards the imine formation either is okay so this is amide now you disconnect it you have nh2 now you do reductive amination what i mean by reductive amination is you delete this nh2 bond and put the ketone let's have a look at the synthesis then you will understand so you start from this ketone now reacting this ketone with hydroxyl amine it will give you the stable oxyme now you do re reduction of this double bond nitrogen uh, with carbon in a catalytic way that you will get the nh2 that's called reductive amination and now you are reacting this nh2 with acetyl chloride acid chloride basically you're converting uh, amines into amides number one then in the number two you are reducing the amide to get your target compound i hope you understood it if you don't understand any of the slide please drop your comments below in this video i will try to make video on particularly that slide okay thanks let's move on to the next slide again you have been given this molecule how will you do retrosynthesis of this compound what you need to do is to recognize functional group that is secondary i mean do you you need to do fgi reduction now carbon double bond uh nitrogen that is imine now you disconnect this one part will become ketone and other part will become nh2 now nh2 and ketone react together in the presence of acid catalyzed media they give you imine formation and this h in brackets shows the reduction and this will give you your target molecule now let's move on to the two group disconnections are better than one if you are given this molecule you can either disconnect it by root b or root a so root a will give you the uh, diols like one two functionalized and a positive charge on this one and root b will give you the alcohol on this side and this one here so you can see this is a synthone that can be used this reagent epoxide because this lone pair of oxygen can attack on this carbon and it can give you the epoxide all right now this is alcohol you react with a base so like sodium hydride you generate a negative charge on this oxygen now this negative charge acts as a nucleophile and it attacks on the epoxide ring and the ring opening reaction takes place hence you get the alcohol formation so this is how you can use the two, two, two group disconnections what were the two groups here one was ether and one was alcohol so this is how we can use this approach okay let's move on towards more examples now this is another example of two groups where you have a secondary amine and alcohol and the distance between two functional groups is one two are the two groups two functional groups are separated by one two disconnection or one two distance now you disconnect the c and bond and get epoxide on one side and nh2 on the other now in the forward direction you react this nh2 with epoxide in the sodium amide ammonia 
you will get this product the ring opening reaction takes place so that's how you can approach the two group disconnections okay let's have a look at another example now again if you see the target compound it contains two group functionalities one is secondary I mean another is alcohol so you count the relationship between two functional groups and then disconnect the C and bond and the other side will give you the epoxide and then you disconnect this oxygen bond between carbon that will give you alcohol on this naphthalene and this is the epoxide now you react this naphthol using a base to generate a negative charge on the phenolic oxygen then this will take on this carbon and the chlorine group will leave and in the next step this secondary uh, primary amine will take on this ep epoxide which is electrophilic in nature and the ring opening reaction will take place and hence you will generate a 1 2 di o di functionalized compound so this is how you can recognize functional groups and the relationship between them and then that's how you can disconnect them all right let's move on to the next strategy this is a very good example of how you can open the ring of epoxide and then make a ring so this is opening and closing of epoxide ring so you are generating a negative charge on oxygen let's say suppose a phenolic oxygen or alcoholic oxygen this attacks on the less substituted side of the epoxide and ring opening takes place now you have a one two relationship between this oxygen and this chlorine and this negative charge attacks on this carbon and this chlorine leaves and you are generating the epoxide let's move on to the next example where you have a masked difunctional compound so this is ester from this angle and this is amide from this angle and it's a cyclic compound so we cannot call it ester nor we can call it amide but we can see clearly what functionalities they are so we disconnect this co bond and we can disconnect this cn bond and we can see the relationship after that so if you disconnect this one then you will get a carbonyl group this one wiped off and this will be connected with the esters methoxy now the relationship between this NH and OH is 1 2 so you can disconnect the bond between carbon and nitrogen and then as a result you get the epoxide formation and the next step again is the CN amine group disconnection so you disconnect between carbon and nitrogen bond and as a result you get the epoxide having the alpha carbon with halogen atom and this is a secondary amine now what happens this secondary amine attacks on this carbon in SN2 fashion to give you this compound and in the next step the primary amine attacks on the less substituted side of this epoxide ring and the ring opening takes place and you get this functionality and in this case you are reacting this with this ester to get you the target compound okay so let's move on to the next example if you see here again this is a one two functionality one is ketone second is tertiary amine having a heterocyclic ring it doesn't matter you need to figure out the relationship between the functional groups. you don't need to panic by looking at the different uh, functionalities or you don't need to panic by looking at the big molecules or different structures focus be calm just figure out what kind of relationship what kind of functional groups they are so you disconnect from one to disconnection that is c and disconnection and you generate a positive charge on carbon number two and that is equivalent to this reagent that is alpha halogenation that is alpha chlorination of the carbonyl compounds and this is a secondary amine so what happens you have alpha carbon here or alpha hydrogen so these are replaced with one chlorine and then this NH attacks on this carbon and then you get the product okay let's move on to the next example so this is the next example where you have a aldehyde and ether functionalities so the relationship between aldehyde and ether is 1 2 so you disconnect the CO bond and then you get a alcohol or phenol on this benzene and the positive charge positive charge on this aldehyde side which is equivalent to this reagent that is alpha bromination on the alpha carbon of aldehyde and you can disconnect this bromine to start from simple starting aldehyde now this aldehyde reacts with Br2 to give you the alpha brominated product and then this react with this phenol in the presence of paste to give you the desired product so this is how you can use the one two group disconnections to generate the simple starting materials and this is a very good way to use these strategies for retrosynthesis okay let's further move on to one three disconnections now in one three disconnections there are different possibilities either you get this double bond 
this ramical acceptor and nucleophile attacks on this position and the bond formation between this carbon and nucleophile takes place in this is a mechanism now if you are given such kind of a situation where you have a carbonyl compound in a nucleophile at position 3 that is called 1-3 disconnection so you disconnect the nucleophilic position generate a positive charge on carbon number 3 which is equivalent to this reagent okay now let's apply this concept to the molecule you have this situation where this side is a nucleophilic and this is your carbonyl compound 1 2 and 3 so you disconnect the CS bond that is called 1 3 disconnection this becomes SH and this side contains a positive charge it's a centone the reagent for this centone is this Michael acceptor so re you react this nucleophilic thiol with this Michael acceptor and you will get the product so this is how we can apply this 1 3 disconnection concept to the organic molecules for retrosynthesis all right let's move on to the next example again this is a 1 3 relationship between this tertiary amine and this ketone so if you count one two and three so you disconnect the cn bond you will get a secondary amine and a positive charge here this is a centone which can which is equivalent to this reagent now you react this piperidine uh, i think then with this uh michael acceptor this nh attacks on this double bond and then you have bond formation between carbon this uh, three and a nitrogen and an excellent yield you don't need to write yields when you are writing the synthesis in the exam because you don't know you are not sure this is a snapshot from a book this is a well-known or uh, reported reaction in the literature that's why the authors reported here but you are not supposed to write uh, yields in the reaction okay make sure you don't confuse yourself with this all right let's move on to the next example and Furthermore, if we go down, we need to follow the guidelines for good disconnections. What are good dis disconnections? Which disconnections are pretty good or which disconnections are reliable? Number one, disconnections must correspond to known reliable reactions. Number two, for compounds consisting of two parts joined by a heteroatom, disconnect next to the heteroatom. Number three, consider alternative disconnections and choose routes that avoid chemoselectivity problems often this means disconnecting reactive groups first number four use two group disconnections where possible all right let's discuss the cc disconnections you you have an alkyne and al alkyl chain so you disconnect from this cc bond and you generate a simple ethyne molecule and a positive charge on this so ethyne is a well-known nucleophilic must compound which can be used as a nucleophilic and this positive charge on this carbon corresponds to this alkyl halide what happens is there is a acidic hydrogen on this ethyne so sodium amide is a base which deprotonates this acidic hydrogen and then generates a negative charge which negative charge attacks on this carbon in an SN2 fashion to give you this product this is a very important reaction the conversion of alkynes into alkenes but there's a stereoselectivity problem so if you want to achieve a cis alkene or z alkene you must use Lindlart's catalyst h2pd if you want to convert alkyne into e or trans alkene you must use sodium and liquid ammonia that's how you approach it okay i this is how you can generate trans alkene or cis alkene from alkynes okay let's move on to follow this strategy or follow that concept to the real apply this concept to the real example so you have this example what you do is you add to fgi reduction basically you converting alkene into alkynes and then you are generating a some sort of relationship between two functional groups of what are the two functional groups here one is alkyne and another is alcohol so you are disconnecting alkyne from one position that is cc bond disconnection and the one side becomes this one and another side becomes this positive charge on this carbon which is equivalent to this epoxide ring we have seen this situation so many times in this series of lectures uh, like uh, in this uh, series of slides now you can disconnect this ethyl group ethyl make it ethyl bromide and start from a simple ethyne and this ethyne contains hydrogens on both the sides and now you are reacting this ethyne with sodium amide uh, base which generates a negative charge on this side of the uh, ethyne and it attacks on the ethyl bromide gives you this 
then you are reacting this e sodium amide again and you are deprotonating this side and you are get generating negative charge which attacks on this epoxide and gi it gives you this then you are reacting this alkyne with h2 lindard's catalyst because you are you need a cis or z alkene hence that's it so this was a strategy that we followed for generating the cis alkene from the by using the alkyne strategy and it's a good example to have so you should understand these simple tricks in order to apply them whenever you can in any complex or different or difficult molecule okay let's move on to the next example now this is ester and this is alkene so you already know how we can disconnect esters so you disconnect esters by co ester linkage and one side becomes alcohol and another side becomes carboxylic acid and the next step is converting alkene into alkynes and then you are disconnecting this side becomes methyl iodide this alkyl halide part and this is a ethyne similar to ethyne containing a one acidic hydrogen and then you are disconnecting this big alkyl chain and you can start the synthesis from simple ethyne compound but here is the issue of uh, alcohol so you first protect the alcohol otherwise you can generate a intramolecular reaction between alcohol and bromine so you first protect alcohol then you start with this now this negative charge on ethyne generated with a base sodium amide attacks on this carbon and bromine leaves and you get a protected alkyne and then next step you again use a base sodium amide and methyl iodide to generate this functionality and in the next step you are converting this alkyne into a trans alkene using sodium and liquid ammonia rather than Linnard's catalyst if you use Linnard's catalyst you will get a cis alkene but if you are using sodium and liquid ammonia you will get a trans alkene and in the next step you can convert this uh, protected alcohol by deprotection into the alcohol and then using acetic anhydride to generate give you the product that is ester containing functionality okay that's the way that's the method that you can apply it and generate the desired functional groups for applying this kind of a strategy okay let's move on to the next example now this is a different approach this is a ester functionality and this is the carbon and this is alkyl chain you disconnect this chain that becomes ethyl bromide and you generate a negative charge there okay now how you can you can do the synthesis of this this is the compound which uh, contains alpha carbon and its acidic position and you can use the base which generates a negative charge on this position and you can use the ethyl bromide as the alkylating agent to generate this compound so this is a very simple way to alkylate the alpha position of carbonyl compounds okay let's move on to the next example so this is again an uh, example of alkylation on the acidic position of carbonyl compound so you disconnect it from this position and you generate a bromine on one side of the compound and negative charge on the other side and then you disconnect from CO bond that's an ether bond into alcohol and this is dialkyl halide now you do the synthesis so you have a phenol you generate a negative charge at phenolic oxygen and then this negative charge attacks on this bromine and it gives you this compound having ether linkage and then you are reacting this with carbonyl compound and then you get the target compound so that's the method um, for generating this functionality and this is the approach for alkylating carbonyl compounds at the alpha position now if you have to do this strategy like this compound having ketone and ester so it's a reagent for synthone and this one so you are generating a negative charge so this this is the reagent for this and if you are generating this negative charge here then the reagent should be this one so this is a very good concept very small thing but it's applied in so many different complex molecules so you need to understand this so if you are generating negative charge here then your reagent for this synthone is should be this if you are generating negative charge on this position 
then the reagent for this synthone is this one okay now let's apply this strategy to this compound so this is a carbonyl compound and having alkyl chain containing double bond so you can disconnect this position from the alpha carbon this is alpha carbon the carbon next to carbon carbon that is next to carbonyl carbon is called alpha carbon so you are disconnecting one to cc one side becomes alkyl halide and another side you get a negative charge which is equivalent to this region now you are reacting with a base to this region generating a negative charge here and this is an enolate which will take on this alkyl halide to give you this product and in the last you can remove the unnecessary ester which was introduced for the react increasing the reactivity of the alpha hydrogens making them more acidic so this is the approach that you can use for alkylation of the alkylation of these compounds for this purpose you can use these compounds and like introduce the ester functionalities into it so that you can generate the negative charge on the alpha carbon and then you can proceed it for the alkylation at the alpha position okay let's move on to the next example now you have a phosphorus containing compound here so you don't need to worry about you just disconnect the cp bond just follow the simple heteroatom strategy disconnect from the heteroatom then you get alcohols then do the fgi reduction then alcohols convert into esters now you have alkyl part and alpha carbon you disconnect this alkyl part and then you can start from this 1,3 diester functionality what happens you react with it with a base generate a negative charge and then use this negative charge to take on this carbon to generate this alkylated product and in the next step you use the uh, reducing agent to first convert esters into alcohols and then you can use the tosyl chloride and pridine to convert alcohols into tosylates and in the last step tosyl why we are doing tosylation because alcohols are not good leaving groups so tosyls are better leaving groups so we convert alcohols into tosyls and then we react this with phosphorus containing reagent to get the target compound so this was the strategy which in which we use the alkylation at the alpha position of the carbonyl compounds let's move on to the next example this is a guideline 5 convert to oxygen based functional groups to facilitate cc disconnection so if you have alkynes you can either disconnection from left side or from the right side either is fine if you have these ketones and esters you can disconnect it from top or bottom this is called alkylation of alpha carbon so you can disconnect it from both ways if you have aromatic ring alkylated you can disconnect it from this position and then you can make it by Friedel-Craft alkylation okay let's go to find out how we can do disconnection of alcohols this is a tertiary alcohol so you disconnect it from one side and you generate a negative charge on this carbon and a positive charge on this central atom so the positive charge equivalent for this carbon is acetone and the negative charge equivalent for this carbon is Greek nitrogen. so you react this alkyl halide first with magnesium in the presence of diethyl ether to generate a Grignard region. Now this Grignard region reacts with this acetone to give you this intermediate and then you hydrolyze this intermediate into alcohol. Okay, now let's proceed further uh, to use this strategy of Grignard region for formation of alcohols. Now you have this uh, unsymmetrical tertiary alcohol. There are three disconnections possible A, B and C. So we will go through the c route that you disconnect from this side and you generate a ketone and then you react this with this ethyl magnesium bromide so the concept here is when you react ketones with grignard reagents you get the tertiary alcohols okay let's do this next example where you have a again secondary alcohol you can either disconnect through a and b so the B approach is slightly less favorable because generating alcohol of Grignard reagent on vinyl position is really a hard task but generating on this sp3 carbon alkyl halide and Grignard reagent is relatively easier. So you disconnect from this position and you will get aldehyde on the one side and Grignard reagent on the other and then you convert this Grignard reagent into alcohol by using FGI strategy let's have a look at the synthesis so you first have alcohol 
you convert it into so iodine by using sodium chloride first converting alcohol into chlorine and then using sodium iodide to convert chlorine into iodine and then reacting this iodine with magnesium and diethyl ether using this aldehyde and then you will get this secondary alcohol that's how you use this approach next example is again tertiary alcohol so you disconnect from this position and you get a negative charge on this carbon now you cannot use Gignard reagent but you can use alkyne instead of that then this is alkylation step alpha alpha alkylation of this carbon will you disconnect it from this position and you get alkylate on one side and the enolate on the another side so what happens you can react these two together to give you this compound and now you are reacting ketones with alkynes they give you the tertiary alcohols and then next step by disconnecting now by doing reduction with Lindard's catalyst you can generate cis alkenes that's how you can replace Gignard regions with alkynes also that's another way good clever strategy okay let's move on to the next example this is relatively different but it's still a tertiary alcohol but it's substituted with symmetrical uh, substituent that is two diaphenyl groups so you disconnect diaphenyl groups and make the rest compound as diaphenyl magnesium bromide and other side becomes the ester now you disconnect this this is a 1-3 disconnection which we already discussed so you disconnect it from this position one side becomes Michael acceptor and the another side becomes the secondary amine now you react this Michael acceptor with the secondary amine to generate this then you are reacting this ester with phenyl magnesium bromide to generate the tertiary alcohol okay now you are familiar with the disconnection of alcohols and this is a 1-3 strategy but if you are if you want to disconnect from this position then these are not the reliable reagents because if you react this aldehyde with this magnesium bromide it will give you alcohol not this one so you need a relatively different approach what you can do instead you convert this ketone by using FGI strategy into alcohol and then disconnect it to get the aldehyde on one side and then get not reagent on the other side so for example now you have a chlorine now you are reacting this chlorine with magnesium diethyl ether and benzaldehyde then you are reacting these together you are generating alcohol now you are doing oxidation of this OH to generate the ketone okay this is another way of achieving your target compound so this is a summary if you have a secondary alcohols you disconnect it from this position one side will become aldehyde and another side will become Gignard reagent if you have tertiary alcohols they are unsymmetrical they are containing three different functional groups so you can disconnect either of these R group and the rest of the become will be ketone and then you have a Gignard reagent reacting with ketones to give you the tertiary alcohols if you have ketones then you first do FGI and then you do the regular type uh, strategy the corresponding reagents will become aldehyde and Grignard reagent now in the forward direction you react this aldehyde with Grignard reagent to give you this alcohol and then you oxidize uh, this alcohol into ketone if you have two similar R groups like 2R or similar R2 R2 means two methyls or two phenyls then you can disconnect those two groups simultaneously at the same position same point and then you will get ester functionality with Grignard reagent now you react this ester with Grignard to generate this tertiary alcohol now another concept in radiosynthesis is a donor and acceptor synthones so donor is denoted with D and acceptor is denoted with A and the number denotes the distance so A1 means having positive charge on carbon 1 a2 means positive charge on carbon 2 and A3 means positive charge on carbon 3 so that's called A1, A2 and A3 and the D1 means negative charge on carbon 1 and D2 means negative charge on carbon 2 and D3 means negative charge on carbon 3 so in this case this is A1 centone because it contains positive charge on carbon number 1 this is D2 centone because this contains a negative charge on carbon number 2 this is a A2 centone because this contains a positive charge on heat carbon number 2 and this is A3 centone because it contains positive charge on carbon number 3 and the equivalent to these centones are these compounds so you can use uh, the A1 aldehyde D2 enolate 
A2 epoxide and A3 Michael acceptor. So if you remember this, if you understand this concept, you can do so many examples of retrosynthesis without any worry. Okay, let's apply this donor acceptor concept and sometimes in exam you are being asked to provide what is type of the centon. It is either A or D. So it's quick way to identify A and D. If it is a positive charge, that's A, means acceptor. If it is a negative charge, that means it's donor. And now you different, uh, you count the numbering. So one, two, three, if it, the positive charge is A carbon number three, that is called A3. If the negative charge is at carbon number two, that is called D2. Okay, let's move on. So this is important thing that is one three difunctionalized compound. So you have an acetone reacting with acetone. This is a self condensation reaction and it gives you the aldol product that is carbonyl group and alcohol. Now you react this aldol group uh, disconnect with this from position two between two and three to generate a negative charge on D2 position and a positive charge on A1. So this is a aldol product one, two, three. So you disconnect from two and three this is one three dicarbonyl compound disconnections and one side becomes aldehyde and other side becomes enolate then you can construct this functional group this is similar to the one three aldol products this is alpha beta unsaturated so what you do first dehydrate fgr dehydrate convert it into alcohol and then you disconnect from bond two and three into the one three dicarbonyl and this is how you can make the forward direction so Again, this is a similar to 1,3 diols, uh, like 1,3, sorry, 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. This is alpha beta unsaturated compound, so you disconnect from the double bond and one side becomes aldehyde and another is aldehyde. It can be ketone as well, but in the next example we will see. So this is alpha beta unsaturated linkage, so you disconnect from this position. The one side becomes aldehyde and another becomes the acetone. Now again we have a double alpha beta unsaturated so you disconnect it again now this side becomes ketone and the other side becomes aldehyde so it's a double alpha beta unsaturated disconnection in this example now what happens you are reacting this with alkylating agent you are generating this ester you are reducing this ester into aldehyde and then you are reacting this aldehyde with this acetone to generate the target molecule okay now let's move on so this is a 1,3 di oxygen containing carbonyl group. So this is a 1 ester and 3 is ol. So what happens here, you disconnect the bond between 2 and 3. So the disconnection gives you the negative charge on the carbon number 2 and the aldehyde carbon number 3 will become aldehyde. And now you are reacting this, uh, attaching another ester group and then this is a simple alkylation reaction so you delete this alkyl reaction and then you have a 1 3 ester linkage now you are reacting this 1 3 ester linkage with this and sodium ethoxide will generate a negative charge here and this negative charge will take on this carbon and then bromine will leave you will get this compound now sodium ethoxide will ge uh, generate a negative charge at this position which will react with this aldehyde to give you the 1 3 di comp uh, carbonyl compounds and you can remove the extra ester group by using sodium hydroxide and heating that's how you can prepare this compound another example of alpha beta unsaturated compounds but this time we have to first convert amide into your this is amide functionality we disconnect between C and bond you get the acid chloride and in the next step we convert acid chloride into carboxylic acids now you have a carbonyl alpha beta unsaturated you disconnect one side becomes aldehyde another side becomes acid so in order to activate this acid we add another acid to make it active methylene compound then generate a negative charge here and react with this aldehyde to give you this linkage and heat the compound to remove extra acid then in the next step you are converting acid using thionyl chloride into chlorine and then you have acid chloride now you are reacting this acid chloride with this primary amine to give you the desired target molecule let's go on to next example this is a functional group relationship may be concealed by protection so sometimes you have a protection in such as in this case so that you can have this the ester linkage of this uh, 
compound and sometimes then you disconnect the coacetol linkage then you generate diodes that is one two three functionalities now you can do fgi reduction you convert alcohols into esters and then you can mm, convert this compound into the simple starting materials by disconnecting from this position so you react this compound with aldehyde and this in the presence of base to generate positive charge then this primary sec secondary amine reacts with this michael acceptor to give you this and in the next step you reduce esters into alcohols then you protect those alcohols with acetals using formaldehyde so this is how you can use the protecting group strategy for these sort of functional groups okay let's have a look at the next example so this is one two three relationship so you disconnect it from here you get the positive charge here and then you generate a alpha beta unsaturated situation and the one side becomes aldehyde and another is active methylene okay let's go on to the aldol style disconnections with n and o in a one three relationship so you react with alpha cyano compounds in the presence of base with acetone or aldehyde or ketone you generate a cyano alcohol compounds then you reduce cyanide into nh2 now you have a relationship between amine and alcohol that is aparted by three functional groups now next we will apply this concept into the molecules before that we need to understand more strategies so this is a one two three relationship between amine and alcohol so what you need to do is fgi reduction to make them closer so you convert nh2 into cyanide and then you disconnect the bond between one and two then you will <coughs> sorry aldehyde and acid uh, cyano compound now in the next step you do the fgi reduction then you have a uh, cyanide at the position two now you are doing disconnection that is from between one and two and the cyanide gets the negative charge in the aldehyde so then you have uh, this example where you are disconnecting the two methyl groups attached with this nitrogen that becomes nh2 that is c and amine disconnection and next step is fgi reduction that is you are converting nh2 into cyanide and then you have a one two three relationship between cyanide and alcohol you are disconnecting the bond between carbon and carbon that is called one three disconnection and you have a simple cyclohexanone and this is a cyanide further you can do disconnection you are converting cyanide into alkyl halide or a benzyl halide so you simply you do this sn2 reaction the sodium cyanide is a nucleophile it takes on this carbon in sn2 by generating this compound and in the presence of base you are generating the negative charge on the alpha carbon of cyanide and this negative charge that takes on this ketone to give you this functionality and in this you can reduce this cyanide into this compound and by reacting further with excess of formaldehyde you can generate the methyls on the nitrogen okay let's do another manic type study there's aldol style disconnections with nitrogen and oxygen in a one three relationship type two the manic reaction so that's a relationship of amine and alcohol that is distance between two functional group is one three so you do fgi reduction and then you convert and this alcohol into ketone then you disconnect the bond between two and three so that you can mix all of these reagents like ketone formaldehyde and this amine to give you this compound and then you do reduction of this ketone to give you the alcohol so apply this strategy to this compound so you have a, this one two three relationship between amine and alcohol so you disconnect this alkyl chain one cc disconnection this is alcohol this is magnesium chloride kicking reagent this becomes ketone now you can disconnect from this position that is carbon carbon bond disconnection and the relationship is one three disconnection and it's a manic type reaction so you react this ketone with this secondary amine formaldehyde in the presence of hcl to generate this manic reagent that contains ketone and then you react this ketone with magnesium chloride containing gignard reagent to give you this alcohol so that's how you can prepare these compounds using manic type reaction this is a strategy that you need to follow in big complex molecules or different or difficult compounds okay let's again follow the 
strategy this is a ether linkage so we are disconnecting co ether bond and one side you are getting alcohol like phenol in this case and another side you are getting alkyl halide so what you do is do fgi so you convert alk chlorine into oh and then you do uh, oxidation of oh to convert it into ketone that's called fgi now you are disconnecting between two and three by manic type reaction then you mix up these things to give you this compound then you reduce this ketone into alcohol then you react it with thionyl chloride it gives you the chlorine now you are reacting this chlorine with this oh of phenol in the presence of base to give you the target molecule so that's the story how you can uh, uh, follow this approach for generating the target compounds or preparing the starting materials and then constructing the synthesis towards the big target compound okay let's move on if you are given this kind of a strategy if you look at this example again this is a 1,3 dicarbonyl compound relationship so you disconnect between 2 and 3 the one side gets a negative charge and the other side gets the positive charge so what you can do is you can apply in amine synthetic strategy for these sort of compounds that is one three dicarbonyl compounds so you first react with this ketone with any amine secondary amine to generate an in amine and then you react this with acid chloride to generate this compound and in the next step you react this with primary amine which will react with this ketone and then you can use H2 catalyst to reduce this compound to generate the this product. That's called the inamine strategy for 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. Now, if you look at this example, you can delete this bromine. That's a CBr electrophilic substitution reaction. And then you can disconnect these two cyanide uh, carbon nitrogen bonds. You generate an enol, and then you have 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. You can disconnect it, and you have these synthones. And which are equivalent to this ones so if you have this situation where you have alcohol on position 3 and carbonyl on 1 you disconnect from position 2 and 3 you will generate these sort of synthetic equivalents which is exactly similar to alpha beta unsaturated if you disconnect this position you will have these synthones easy so you try to remember this summary in your mind and the relationship of the functional groups though, so that you can apply this concept for this sort of compounds this is a manic reaction strategy if you have a relationship between one and three and you have a nucleophile at position three you can disconnect from two and three and you have a simple starting materials and you combine them you will get this reaction another reaction was one the relationship between amines and alcohols amines and alcohols you do fgi you convert nh2 into cyanide and then you disconnect between the cyanide and alcohol into these simple molecules and then you have one three diketones use the chelation condensation you disconnect between two and three to generate these enols centons how about one five disconnections so in one in case of one five disconnection you can disconnect it from position three and four and you will get a positive charge on 3 which will be equivalent to this centone now you are reacting this enone with this active methylene compound in the presence of base to get this and then in the next step you are converting hydrolyzing one of the ester into acid and then you are removing another ester using acid and heat to generate the positive uh, target compounds this is a 1,5 difunctional compound that you can prepare this way next is this is cn amide bond disconnection because the cyclic amide so you disconnect it and then you generate a 1,5 dicarbonyl compounds then it's alkylation 1,5 uh, disconnection you can disconnect it from this position the one becomes a michael acceptor and this alkyl group you disconnect it and you can start from this simple steric material what happens is you have alpha position of this ester which uh, base picks proton from this position and attacks on the ethyl bromide and you generate this compound and in the in the next step the base reacts with this compound generate a negative charge and this attacks on this compound to give you this and in the presence of base you get the target molecule this was the natural reactivity and ampoling is a reversal of polarity so you generate positive charge in the ampoling you convert this positive charge into negative charge so the a1 synthone this is a2 oh sorry d2 and this is a3 
and this is d1 and this is a a2 centrons so one two di functional compounds so this is diols so do fgi di hydroxylation you convert diols into alkenes then do Wittig reaction and then you have a illid and aldehyde and then do you fgi that gives you the alcohol now this is alcohol so you disconnect from two methyl groups you generate ester if you remember this is a tertiary alcohol and two methyls are symmetrical so there's the relationship of ester and alcohol now is two functional groups one two and then you convert ester into cyanide then you disconnect cyanide that gives you the ketone now you react this cyanide with ketone and in the presence of ethanol so you first get the alcohol and cyanide and then cyanide is hydrolyzed into acid which is then reacting with ethanol to give you the ester then you react this ester with excess methyl magnesium bromide to give you the diols that is for 1,2 diafunctional compounds this is a 1,4 diafunctional compounds it's a very tricky reaction so you disconnect from position 2 and 3 you generate a negative charge and a positive charge both on the alpha carbon so you put the bromine where the positive charge is and you use the in amine strategy for the negative charge to make it a more nucleophilic and in this way you can generate the 1,4 diaf carbonyl compounds but here is a summary for 1,4 diaf carbonyl compounds you can dis in this previous example you disconnected from 2 and 3 position here you can disconnect from 1 and 2 in that case you get a negative charge on this carbon and the positive charge and the synthetic equivalent for this positive charge is the Michael acceptor and also you can disconnect from position 3 and 4 for 1, 4 dicarbonyl compounds and you get a negative charge on this carbon and a positive charge on this and for this positive charge you can use this uh, acid chloride as a synthetic equivalent of which is reagent so let's apply this study to this real example so now you are disconnecting from 2 and 3 you are generating a negative charge on this alpha position and a positive charge on this carbon so you can use the in amine route and here you are disconnecting from 3 and 4 you are generating a positive charge and negative charge here so you can generate the d1 centone which is cyanide and the positive charge here that is michael acceptor enone this is again a 1-4 disconnection and you can directly use the friedel craft acylation but you need to do first fgi convert ester into acid and then you disconnect it and this is intramolecular reaction this was the chapter of cladding that I described in this long video sorry for making a long video but someone asked me to make a very big video about retrosynthesis I will make two more big videos two big lectures on retrosynthesis from two different books and after those two videos that will be the end of the retrosynthesis and you will be master if you clearly listen what I have mentioned in this video and I will make more videos about this and this was this video was taken from the Clayton organic chemistry book chapter 30 and I made this video if you don't understand any molecule rate of synthesis from this video lecture please drop your questions in the comments of this video on the YouTube I will try to answer and I am not solving the exercise I am leaving this to you to solve this exercise of gliding this is a problem number one but if you are unable to solve the exercise please ask me in the comments of the YouTube then I will try to make another video where I will solve these problems for you but I hope that if you have understood the video about the retrosynthesis the whole chapter you should be able to solve these problems by yourself but in case if you are unable to solve these problems then I will make another video to help you out to solve these problems this is the problem number one there's the problem number two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen that's it and then you try to solve these 14 problems and don't forget to subscribe my channel i will be making more videos about all of the organic chemistry courses such as stereochemistry nmr ir u visible mass spectrometry natural products reaction mechanism name reactions retrosynthesis you name it okay 
So I hope you liked this video and there was a beautiful concepts, beautiful summaries that you can take with yourself and then apply them into the real exam and learn the course of reactor synthesis. I hope you liked it and we'll see you with another video about reactor synthesis. Thanks for watching. Bye. Take care.